So the order of this series, uh, I actually wanted to be quite uh, clear about not starting uh, the Seven Deadly Sins series uh, with lust. I didn't want that to be the very first um, sin that is addressed because uh, sometimes uh, it is the first uh, sin that we think of and then it becomes the only sin that we think of. I especially remember, uh, I guess, uh, my days as a uh, brand new Christian in, in youth group with a bunch of, you know, horny teenagers and um, people who cared about us and cared for us, um, being, uh, having them check in on us and, and ask us questions and, and maybe put a hand on our shoulder and look earnestly at us and say, how are you doing with sin? And I knew, you know, we knew what they meant and they knew what they meant. And then we'd say either, yeah, doing good with sin this week or not doing good with sin that week. And what they weren't asking is, how's the pride of your heart? Or are you dealing with envy this week? Or um, is there sinful anger in you? Uh, Sin just was code word for lust and its various teenage uh, expressions. And so that's kind of as far as the conversation ever got. And so I wanted to make sure that as we addressed lust, I think it'd be foolish to skip it, but also would be foolish to pretend that that is the only thing that people uh, deal with. Um, However, lust is a, uh, like I mentioned, a big stumbling block for so many and for so long. Uh, The New Testament book of 1 Thessalonians, uh, Paul tells us, about what God's plan for your life is. God's plan for your life is laid out in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. Uh, You can flip there if you want, or you could just listen as I tell you what God's plan for your life is. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says, This is the will of God. Your ears perk up. What's God's will for my life? This is God's will for your life. Your sanctification. That you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you would know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Now often that question of what is God's will for my life generally has to do with what career path will I take? Or what country will I live in? Or what city is going to be my home? Uh, And the Bible, you know, I believe God cares about those things and has a will for your life. But before we get to those specifics, the first thing is that God wants you to be sanctified, to be in a process of being brought from unholiness towards holiness. That's what sanctification means. And then he also gets more specific and says that you abstain from sexual immorality. And he says that you control your body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust. And so often for this whole series, I'm trying at the beginning of each sermon to define what the sin is. And I often find it's kind of hard to define what they are. You kind of like feel them rather than speak about them. Uh, but here, I think, I think Paul in Thessalonians basically says that it's the opposite of holiness and it's the opposite of honor. He, he, he lays those two aside. You're, you're either living your, uh, possessing your body in holiness and honor or in the passion of lust. So lust is the opposite of holiness, the opposite of honor. So as I said, I don't think that lust is necessarily you know, the worst of these seven deadly sins, but I will say it's probably the most popular. Um, we're dealing with it not because it's the deepest pit uh, of no return, uh, but it's because it's a very wide path. It's like a you know multi carriage, uh, you know a dual carriage. What do you, what's it called? We call it a, I call it a freeway where I'm from. <laughs> but, um, it's a multi lane freeway, dual carriageway, whatever, where lots of people traverse back and forth. 